Hopkin. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Eagle Ridge Academy. And today I'd like to talk to you about why I feel like pre-K is an important part of a child's life, especially the Georgia pre-K in our public schools. I've been a teacher for 25 years. And when I started, I was a kindergarten teacher. After four years, our school opened a pre-K class and I was so excited to try to get those babies ready for kindergarten. It was my goal to make a difference in their lives so that they would walk into kindergarten with the skills that they needed. Pre-K teachers in Muskogee County are, are so well trained. I had so much training and wonderful opportunities to learn what developmentally appropriate teaching meant for a four-year-old, how to get them excited about learning, how to teach them to think through problems and just do a lot of fun things that uh, by the time they get to kindergarten, we just don't get to do as much, even though it's a passion of mine. They take a child where they are and they just move them forward and grow them. If it is someone who already has the skills of letters and sounds, then those teachers go ahead and take the opportunity to go ahead and teach them more about reading and writing. If a child is struggling with those letters and sounds and they plan activities and fun things for that child to do to practice those things so that they can hopefully learn them by the end of kindergarten, by the end of pre-K to be ready for kindergarten. Um, the pressure just isn't there. So the pre-K teachers strive to grow them and to get them ready, but they're not going to push them in an uncomfortable way. Probably one of the greatest things I see in our own classes at Eagle Ridge Academy is the love that those teachers and the peer professionals have for those children. They care for them and nurture them and they truly treat them like they were one of their own. More than anything, I just hope that you take advantage of this wonderful opportunity, this program that strives to grow children in the safest, most loving, caring way possible. It is a, I guess, a, it is a diamond that you need to grab. Okay. And I thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope to see you in one of our Georgia Pre-K classrooms next year. Thank you. Welcome to Simple Steps Science Stories. What is science? Science is the study of the great big world around us. And today we're gonna read two stories about our amazing earth and what it can do. Stick around after the stories for a special Skittles rainbow experiment. Let's get started. Baby Loves Green Energy. Written by Ruth Spiro, illustrated by Irene Chan. Baby has a blanket. It's not too big or too little. It's not too thick or too thin. It's just right. When Baby puts the blanket on, she feels warm. The Earth has a blanket too, just like Baby. The Earth's blanket is air. Air is made up of many different gases. We can't see them, but they're all around us. Plants and animals need air to live. The sunlight warms the Earth. The blanket of air helps hold the warmth in. Some gases in the air, like carbon dioxide, are very good at this. They are called greenhouse gases. But people are adding more greenhouse gases to the air. Cars and trucks burn fuel that makes extra carbon dioxide. Power plants and factories do too. The extra greenhouse gases hold in too much warmth. Under the blanket, the earth is getting too hot. How 
can people help? We can use other kinds of energy that don't add greenhouse gases to the air, like hydroelectric energy, wind energy, solar energy, and geothermal energy. This is called green energy. Baby wants to help too. What can she do? She can walk instead of ride, turn off the lights, and recycle. Baby loves green energy because Baby loves our Earth. The end. Our next book is called What is a Rainbow? Written by Harriet Blackford and illustrated by Mike Henson. It's a hot, sunny day. The Tech Tots decide to cool off by playing with the garden hose. As if by magic, a rainbow appears in the spray of water. Wow, look at that, says Isla. Let's name all the colors, says Isla. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Can you help the Tech Tots remember the colors in the right order? Let's look at the first letter of each color. R-O-Y-G-B-I-V. Hmm, to help us remember the colors, let's say really old yaks go bathing in vests. Suddenly, the sun goes behind a cloud and the rainbow disappears. Wait, says Zeb, here comes the sun again. Look, says Mia, the rainbow has come back. Ah, says Isla, a rainbow is made by light. Yes, says Zeb, a rainbow is made from light and water. Light is made up of rays of every color. When light rays go through water or glass, they bend, explains Seb. Each ray bends a different amount, so they separate into every color of the rainbow. Just then it starts to rain, so everyone rushes indoors. Let's experiment, says Mia. stands a glass of water on a sheet of white paper. Then she shines a flashlight on the water. Look, a mini rainbow, says Isla. Hey everyone, shouts Oscar, look outside. It is still raining, but the sun is shining too. That's what I call a good-sized rainbow, says Isla. It's beautiful. Mia laughs. And now we know how it's made. The end. For this experiment, you'll need three things. A plate, a measuring cup for warm water, and of course, Skittles. First, pour out several Skittles onto a plate and make a pattern of colors along the inner rim. 
Can you tell me what shape that is? Correct, it's a circle. Next, gently pour warm water onto the center of the plate. Make sure there's enough water to cover the candy and the entire center. And now we wait. After about 30 seconds, you'll see the colors slowly begin to travel away from the Skittles to the center of the plate. Why is it doing that? The warm water is breaking down the sugar and food coloring on the Skittles. And then the sugar travels to the center of the plate where there isn't any sugar. Notice how the colors stay separated. Isn't that neat? Try the experiment again using a different color pattern. You can also try other types of candies or use cold water and see if the results are different. tuning in to Simple Steps Science Stories. If you'd like more information on our amazing collection of science books for kids, please visit cvlga.org and reserve your books today. Have a great day! Ninety percent of brain growth happens before kindergarten. Ninety percent. So talk, sing, read, write, and play with your child every day. Those five simple steps build the foundation for a lifetime of learning.